modernism begins in the age of revolution. Two revolutions, the industrial revolution and the political revolutions for democracy. In the United States, England's North American colonies rebelled against their mother country, winning independence in 1776. The United States' success encouraged the French, who in 1789 established a constitutional monarchy followed by a republic in 1792 with the royalties, the kings, the Bourbons, with their heads getting chopped off around 1793. And you're looking at an image of the execution of Louis XVI from 1793. Maybe we'll play some music from the Miserable to get into the feel of the heads getting cut off and the people taking the power. Yes, very good. All of this culminated in the reign of terror when more aristocrats, more government officials, and many sympathizers lost their lives. And here is the lovely Marie Antoinette and her head chop chop uh, getting taken off. The revolution was about the people taking the power, taking the power away from the aristocracy, away from the king. And in this sense, I think it relates to contemporary rap, which is also about taking the power. It's about a realism of the street, and modernism is gonna be about realism. So let's listen to Run DMC. It's tricky for a second. Let's listen to this. I'm going to be making a number of comparisons between the history of art and contemporary art and contemporary music, and here's a good example. So back to Europe, Napoleon's massive military force sweeps through Europe, basically all of it. Then with his collapse, you remember he goes to the lovely island of Elba. The monarchy was once again restored in 1815, only to be undone again in 1830 with yet another revolution about the right to vote. And then there's another revolution in 1848. This is a workers' revolution. So this is the time of incredible political unrest. So many revolutions, so much bloodshed, so much change. And that's an important characteristic of modernism. There's this crazy amount of change, not only through the politics of the moment, but through the technological inventions, through industry. Think about it. This is the moment where airplanes at first appear, department stores, electric light, that's huge. So social changes within the society and political changes within the society, that's the backdrop of modernism. I mean, one could compare the Renaissance, which lasted about one and a half centuries, to one of our modern movements, let's take Impressionism, that lasts for about 17 years or so. So this is, we're talking rapid fire, rapid fire, ism following ism, following movement, following movement. So this moment of revolution was basically about individual rights. The people fought for a voice, just like with the rap artists, fighting for a voice. This is the backdrop of modernism. This is the backdrop for what we call the avant-garde. It's a good term, you're gonna be using it a lot through this course. The avant-garde in art is connected with the movements for democratic revolution. Essentially, a growing belief in progress began to replace the static assumption behind the hierarchy of the ruling class. People, everyday people, look to the introduction of new ideas in open debate. This is democracy. New ideas from the individual that could affect change. Democracy, like our vote. So, for example, if we go into our first room in the Art Institute of Chicago, you see one wall given over to several paintings. And this wall, this installation strategy, the way the paintings are put together, tells an important story about 19th century political change. In this case, the abolition of slavery, huge issue at the time. So in the middle in this wall is a canvas by J.M.W. Turner, and I'm gonna talk about Turner's important paintings later on. At the moment, what's key here is that he was known as an important abolitionist. In fact, he did a, a key painting called The Slave Ship. So the Turner painting is flanked on the left by another painting by John Philip Simpson called The Captive Slave from 1827. And this English painter 
exhibits an image of a really a heroic man looking up as if in a divine state, a heroic man whose, whose manacles are evident. So this is a slave. This is the slave trade, and it was hugely controversial and in fact would not be fully resolved in England until six years after this painting was painted when Parliament passed the Slave, Slavery Abolition Act. So on the other side of the Turner are all of these portraits of the upper class by the Spanish artist Goya and Portana. So this is quite an interesting installation, quite an interesting juxtaposition of paintings. You have the powerful aristocracy on the one side and the one who they have power over, the black slave on the other. Throughout the course, at moments we're going to stop and look at the Art Institute's installation. This will be important when you do your project. You're going to have a curatorial project yourself. You're going to be installing works of art uh, as a final project, and you're going to be wanting to convey a set of ideas or, or design sensibility through your virtual curatorial project. So we're going to stop and talk about curatorial uh, ideas as we progress through our touring modernism. So in this moment of political revolution, the point is that now the individual has something to say and the individual opinion needs to be heard. And this is the case both in politics and in works of art. Patronage also shifts somewhat, we'll see. No longer the patron is solely the church or the king, where subject and style was dictated very strictly. No, now we're talking about independent practice, independent art practice, such that the independent artist needs an independent patron. So we have the development of the art dealer, we have the development of the art gallery, and we have the development of the art critic, right? Freedom of expression really begins with modernism. The artist could finally paint what he or she wanted. Turner could paint a landscape as a vehicle for expressing emotion. This is essentially new. Landscape had never been used in this way, and we're going to talk more about Turner momentarily. So we use this term avant-garde, which is a French military term, referring to a group of soldiers that would go far out ahead of the main forces doing reconnaissance. They would seek out the next military engagement. The avant-garde artist, then, is one who also boldly, bravely moves into areas not yet explored, and through his and this is primarily his, this is going to be a major sub-theme, the lack of women artists throughout this course, but through his bold insights, through his bravery, through his reconnaissance, through his avant-garde, he gets somewhere that the rest of the society eventually comes to accept until a new style is offered, until a newer way of making art is discovered, and then the cycle repeats itself.